Got it. So think about the strategic and operational effects that need to be delivered at the tactical edge at the time and choosing of a commander's uh, scheme of maneuver, right? When the commander wants to apply that effect. Think cyber, think deep sensing, think long range precision fires. If you're gonna fire something from hundred, literally hundreds of miles away, that is not gonna be done solely on a tactical network. We must unify the strategic, operational, and tactical levels so that we can operate at speed. It's the ability to really apply different effects from a variety of domains 
that just gives a adversary so many dilemmas they don't know how to act. That is leveraging the most uh, modern capabilities that we can get, but it's all based off of zero trust principles. It's taking it away from a perimeter style network and thinking network centric to really thinking about the information and data that rides over it. Assuming it's brief, breached because we have very thinking adversaries, but making sure we have secured the data and then rapidly moving that data to the point of need, leveraging things like machine learning and artificial intelligence so that we can again see, sense, understand, and act and assess way faster than our adversaries. And this warfighter is really informing what that path is going to look like. Uh, and we'll take those lessons learned, and then we will do the appropriate things in the Pentagon to make sure that we align resources and then prioritize what we absolutely must fix as we move towards this notion of a data-centric army on a unified network that's based off of zero trust principles. The first thing is, is, that, is that really preparation for, for uh, large-scale ground combat, uh, whether exercise like we're doing now, exercises like we're doing at Atlantic Resolve in Europe, or um, uh, the actual execution of, of uh, the, uh, the war plan, uh, it really starts here um, uh, at each one of our post camps and stations. And it's not only the, the piece that the, uh, that the units are responsible for, their maintenance, uh, their training, uh, the readiness of their soldiers and their equipment, it's really our responsibility uh, working with the senior commanders at each installation to make sure that we have the necessary uh, capabilities uh, to outload uh, those units and get them uh, in a rapid uh, fashion to wherever they, the, uh, the nation needs to send them. So it's, it's the, the, uh, the rail yards, it's the, uh, the training that, that, uh, that we have to do with the crews to make sure they know how to load. It is uh, understanding the rail networks that, uh, that each one of our post camps and stations, and then all the way down to the ports that they, um, uh, that they leave out of. The warfighter exercise is really about hey, what happens when you actually start executing uh, the, uh, the operational plan? And sustainment is embedded in that from, from top to bottom as well. I, I think three corps is just doing a fantastic job of integration of sustainment capabilities and commands into, the, um, uh, into everything that they do, uh, into really the armored core, uh, mounted warfare, armor warfare, um, uh, and the, the training that goes along with that. On a previous assignment, I was an uh, uh, Expeditionary Sustainment Command Commander as a Brigadier General at Fort Bragg, and we had the same uh, 3UK that was uh, participated with us in a warfighter. Um, and their sustainers, and we worked together with their sustainers, and not only did I learn from them, hopefully I taught them some stuff just like they were teaching me some stuff. And I come here to see the same, you know, the same flag working with this 3 Corps, um, uh, three corps uh, warfighter and you know, several years later, and that cooperation and synchronization has gotten even tighter. Uh, the more you train and the more you uh, work together, the better we're going to be. And it, it is being played out right now with seamless integration uh, between uh, really, really close allies 